Hello, hello, welcome. How are you guys doing? Okay, so we shall begin shortly as I wait as we wait for more friends to join us. All right, hello, hello. All right, I see some familiar faces today. All right, please. My name is Teacher Hedy. Please let me know that you can hear me and you can see me in the chat box. All right, Tap, type anything. Type hi, type um, anything, type a question mark. <laughs> All right, hello, hello, um, Evangeline, uh, Evangeline, how do I pronounce your name? All right, okay, so once again, welcome to Welcome to Tender Be Live Sharing. All right, hello, Epri Maya. All right, hello, hello, Rachel, hello, Yuhan. Hello, Aurich. All right, welcome. Hello. All right, yes, thank you. I'm doing very well. All right, so as you see, we have a newly revamped Tenopee live sharing session. All right, right now we're going to have six classes focused on one topic, one class each week. All right, I have the honor to start this session with you guys. All right, and we will be talking about primary, primary three and four writing tips. All right. If you're primary five and six, no worries. You're also welcome in this class. All right, so before we move on to the content, some very simple rules, all right, basic rules in this classroom. There is a chat box function, which you can type any and every message you want, anything you want to talk, you want to tell teacher Hedy. If you're answering any questions I posted, feel free to post in the chat box, all right? I will be able to see your messages given that no one spans. Your messages can only be seen by me, Teacher Hedy, all right? So don't worry if you have any secrets you want to share, you're welcome. All right, there's also a second way of communication, which is through the microphone, by which everyone in the classroom will be able to hear you, all right? So the microphone is only reserved for very long answers or long and complicated questions. If you do need to use the microphone, all right, or emergencies, of course. If you do need to use the microphone, please raise your hand. All right, there's a raise hand button. I hope you guys can find it. Please raise your hand so I know that you have a question and need it to be unmuted. All right. Hello, Rico. All right, so that's how we communicate in this classroom. If you have any questions about anything I, I talked about, if you don't understand, please let me know, all right? In the chat, in by raising your hand, let me know your concerns. All right, if we're ready, Today, we're going to start with lesson one, and we're going to talk about the importance of climax. All right, climax. What is a climax in the story? It's the most important, it's the most interesting part, right? So the climax is the tipping point of your plot mountain, of your story, which is basically the most exciting moment in your story, where the problem is at its worst, all right, or your characters, have gathered up the courage and is ready to push themselves, all right? That's the climax moment, all right? Climax moments are very important because that's the most exciting part in your story. Okay, so now you know why it's important. Class is over, goodbye. <laughs> all right, you guys are probably asking, what happened, right? What happened? Hey, class just started, why are you saying goodbye? Okay, so here's the thing. If you ever do encounter a situation where this question, hold on, what happened, comes into your mind, all right, you're probably encountering an underexplained action. All right, so teacher Harry told you the climax is important. All right, that is about the most important thing that you are going to learn in this class. However, we just started class yet. It's not yet the time that we reach the climax where you know the climax is important. All right, so teacher Hedy here skipped a big step. All right, and by skipping that, I've left you guys questioning, what, why did she say class is ending? Am I correct? Okay, so here's the thing. If the action is not explained, if it's under explained, your readers will have the same question. What happened in between? Why did your plot suddenly come from this point to the next? All right, the next point, your climax is very exciting. It's very interesting, but your readers are still going to ask, what? Okay, let's take an example. For example, it was a very nice day. So James and Steve, two good friends, were playing basketball happily. They decided to go play bas basketball. However, they suddenly started fighting. Will this story make sense to you? Or when you see the story, your insurance is what? Huh? 
Right, what do you think? Is this story good enough? Can teacher Hedy write a composition like this? All right, they were playing basketball happily. However, they suddenly started fighting. Would you know what happened? All right, let me know. Would you know what happened in the chat? Yes or no? Hello? <laughs> All right, thank you, Ariel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Aprimaya. No, what happened, right? Okay, so from, from friends playing happily to suddenly fighting, that's a huge step. All right, and if you write very briefly like this, your readers will definitely ask you, what, why? Okay, yes, thank you, Arich. Thank you, Yuhan. All right, so the biggest problem with this transition here, there's one word here that causes us the most points, all right, causes us the most problems in our content, all right, in the content scores of your composition. And that word is suddenly. All right, suddenly. Okay, now think about this word, suddenly. A lot for it. When you think about it, a lot of things happen suddenly. However, however, here's the trick. The crimes of suddenly, writing suddenly in your story. Yes, you do have a climax. You, do, you did transit to the climax. The boys got into a fight. James and Steve got into a fight. However, however, if you only used suddenly, your readers, we, would not know why or how they got into the fight. Does that make sense? All right, suddenly they started fighting. But why? But how? What? Right? Okay, so yes, you did transit to the climax. Yes, there is a climax, but it's not explained enough. So that is what teacher Hedy meant by an underexplained action. In this case, the action of fighting, of the two kids fighting, is underexplained. Why? How? All right, okay, so generally remember this tip, nothing happens suddenly, all right? Nothing happens suddenly. Everything happens with a procedure. There's a process for everything that develops. All right, here's a science tip. Not even the thunder that will scare you on a stormy night, that will not happen suddenly as well, okay? All right, so that's how a thunder formed. If you're, real, if you're interested in that, I recommend you to try our science classes to find out more, all right? Right now, just remember the fact that nothing happens suddenly. And when you're writing your stories, you should do better than say suddenly something happened. All right, so what exactly did we miss if we use suddenly in our story? All right, so look at the progression of how events happen. First of all, we have an introduction, all right? We have an introduction, which is the setup of the story that you guys know. Anyone wants to read the introduction? It's a short sentence. All right, so setting up the story. Before we move into the climax, before anything else happens, there has to be a setting, right? Okay, if anyone's eager to try out their microphone, please raise your hand. All right, Muting, thank you. All right, Muting, let's, let's oh, sorry, Rich. Muting, let's read the sentence, all right? Let's read the introduction. Hello, Muting. It was a nice Sunday afternoon. Having nothing else to do, Steve and James decided to go to the park and play basketball. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Muting. All right, so this is a mm, okay introduction, all right? It has some basic settings, all right? It tells you why they are playing basketball. So this introduction passes, all right? And in that story we just summarized, there is a climax. Okay, they got into a fight and James punched Steve in the face. Okay, between the introduction and the climax, the most exciting point in the story, what are we missing? What are we missing in between? All right, what is the second part in your plot mountain? Anyone in the chat? What is it? What is the second part between the introduction and the climax? How do you reach the climax? How do you reach the climax? Rachel, very good, all right? Rachel says problem. The problem is the climax, all right? The problem is at its most in the climax. But how do we reach the climax? How did the problem evolve? That part, all right, that part in your composition is called the rising action, all right? It's called the rising action. So your story progresses to them, from them playing to fighting, all right? There's a rise of action. 
Okay, so that's called the rising action. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Papatua. All right, very good, rising action. Okay, so in this case, in the case of the story we just used as an example, what could be the rising action? What could be some reasons why James suddenly punched Steve in the face? Any ideas? All right, think about it. I have a few examples for you. All right, let's see if these work. All right, for example, maybe Steve cheated in the match and he refuses to apologize. Well, if I am James and my friend cheated, I would be very mad. If I'm so mad, I might punch him in the face. Does that make sense? That explains it, right? That's a valid reason. It's not good to fight your friend, but it's a valid reason. Similarly, reasons such as Steve accused James of cheating, even though James did not. All right, so James was playing perfectly along the rules, but Steve suddenly say to him, hey, you're cheating, you're a cheater. Oh, wow, I would be mad, all right? That would explain why I would maybe want to punch him in the face. Okay, mm, Aprimaya has a very good idea as well. All right, we'll share that with the class later. All right, some other examples. Maybe Steve pushed James on the ground in order to score a shot. All right, so Steve's not being a good friend here. He would rather push James, all right? He would, he would risk pushing his friend on the ground and injuring him just because he wanted to score a goal. That's not being a good friend, and James has all the reasons to be mad. All right, so see how these things help the development of the story, which makes the flow more natural to the point where they're playing happily and then suddenly they're fighting, okay? So there's no sudden here. They're fighting because Steve did something bad. All right, of course, ultimately, it could be James' fault. It could be James' fault. Maybe, maybe James was the one who cheated and Steve caught him out. Steve was, hey, James, you cheated. That's not good. And James, feeling very ashamed, perhaps he was still playing with their other friends, feeling very ashamed, wanted Steve to shut up and don't say it out. Then maybe James would be angry at Steve for, for yelling out. And thus, he might want to fight Steve. Well, right here, James is not being a good friend, okay? It's not being a good friend here, but that's also a reasonable plot. Some other plots you guys have as suggestions, Aprimaya says maybe both of them want to play with the ball first and they were fighting over whoever gets the ball first. That's a, also a very valid reason, all right? Okay, so apart from all these, there are many other possibilities, all right? You are not limited to one certain rising action. However, you, so you might create, you may create all sorts of rising actions, but do remember, all right, do remember, however, there has to be a rising action, all right? There has to be a rising action. You should not jump from the introduction directly to the climax, because if you do that, your readers will be very confused, just like when teacher had to jump from the start of class to the end of class. That's very confusing, right? Okay, so here's your key takeaway from this short session, all right? The importance of the climax. The impact of the climax is made and emphasized through the buildup in the rising action. So with a good rising action, you can have a good, impactful, and important climax that your readers will understand and will be engaged. All right. Without that proper rising action, the climax would just be a sudden event that will confuse your readers a lot. So please avoid doing that. And remember always to add the rising action before you go into the problem, all right? I know everyone's excited about the problem, okay? The action scene, the fight, all right? How unique is that? That's so exciting. I want to write about it so much. But before you move on to that, please write the rising action as well, all right? Build it up for your readers so that they will understand why the next scene is very important. Okay, all right, so that's your key takeaway for this class. And for next class, look at the two pictures on the screen. Both of these pictures can be summarized as James punched Steve. All right, one is the helping picture we just saw. One is from um, a Hollywood blockbuster, all right, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. All right, so what exactly makes the difference between 
a Hollywood blockbuster movie. Oh, that earned millions of dollars. All right, and our usual composition. How can we write our composition in the style of a of a good action movie that really engages our readers? We'll talk about this next week as we learn how to describe actions to make your climax more interesting. All right. Okay. Any questions? Before you leave. Before you leave. All right. Aren't you guys curious why Teacher Hetty caught the major point? Why I caught the end of lesson, the climax, and not the ending? Aren't you guys curious? Climax is the tipping point. There's a lot after the climax, right? Okay. Here's the tick. If you enjoyed the lesson, if you want to talk more with Teacher Hetty and connect more of us, please scan the QR code on the screen, all right? If you do not have any questions for me, I do have another question for you, and that will be posted in our Tenopee Telegram group. So please get your phone or ask your parents to scan the QR code on the, on the screen and join us in the chat group, all right? We'll be posting updates, right? Okay, please take a moment to scan the QR code. All right, I hope to see you guys in the group. Okay, all right, if you have already scanned the QR code, all right, if you do not have your phone with you right now, please take a screenshot of the screen, all right, screenshot on your phone. Um, I think it's usually the power button with volume down or maybe with the home screen, all right. If you're on the computer, it's usually command shift S or something. All right, anyways, please scan the QR code or take note of it, and I'll see you with, a next, with another question to test your knowledge in that Telegram group. All right, thank you for paying attention in class today. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again next week. By the meantime, if you're interested in our regular classes, we do offer different classes in English, math, and science. If you want to know how thunders are formed, join our science class. Right, which offers our full online classes, homework marking, all right, questions interaction, and one-on-one -on -one sessions when needed. So a lot of things hmm, to look forward to if you're interested. Right, Teacher Eddie teaches regular writing classes for primary three and four. All right, so if, if you want to see me more, enjoy an hour with me, please sign up for a trial class. All right. This QR code is for trial classes. If you're new to Tenopee, I, I recommend scanning the code and getting a free class with us. All right. Okay, that's my promotion and that's my finishing line. I really enjoyed today with you guys and I thank you for all your participation. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. It will be my pleasure to see you guys again next week. So goodbye for now and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye, Rich. All right. Bye-bye, Ariel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Cargan. Bye-bye, uh, Perpeta. Bye-bye, Rachel. All right. Bye-bye, Eprimaya. Bye-bye, Evangeline. All right. Bye-bye, Yuhan. Bye-bye, Rico. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Goodbye. See you guys next week. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye, Rachel. Goodbye, Primaya. See you next week.